Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A series. You know, I say it every time, but we love your guys' questions. We are so honored that you'll turn to us and you trust in us to answer your questions. Uh, and we also appreciate the support. We have a lot of folks that uh, we answer their questions and then they turn right around and buy something from our website and we ship it out to them and then we get pictures and we get feedback on how much we helped them and how much they love doing business with Mad River Outfitters. So thank you all for that. Keep those questions coming, man. We love it. We love helping you guys. Um, you know, it's our real passion here at Mad River Outfitters. We've always said education is the cornerstone of our business and we're here to prove that. So send your questions to admin at madriveroutfitters.com and if we get to them here on the YouTube channel, we will send you out a Mad River Outfitters hat and fly box. So today, uh, we've got a couple uh, that kind of tie in together, uh, and we're going to uh, have to move to the marker board for the end of this, but uh, let's start off with Aaron, Aaron Goki from Indianapolis, Indiana, our neighbor. Aaron says, hello, my name is Aaron, and I just started fly fishing for the first time, and I'm really excited to hone my skills. Your videos have been my main source for all things fly fishing, so thank you for all that you do. Well, Aaron, you're welcome. Uh, we appreciate you watching, uh, but there's some other folks out there too you should be watching here on YouTube, but, um, but of course, stay tuned. And Aaron goes on to say, I'm a little confused. My question relates to the flies themselves and their associated methods. I've heard that the two main ways to fly fish are nymphing and using dry flies on the water surface. Can you explain the difference between the two, why I might choose one or the other, and what kind of techniques work best? Well, let's see, Aaron, let me try to answer this the best I can. You've heard that there's two main ways to fly fish or nymphing and using dry flies on the water surface. Well, that sounds like trout fishing. Um, and in our world, there's a lot more to fly fishing than trout. Of course, we fish for a variety of different species, bass, smallmouth, pike, muskie, um, carp, of course, peacock bass, bonefish, hot redfish, etc., etc. Um, but for trout fishing, nymph fishing and dry fly fishing are two methods. The one you left out was streamers. And you must remember that if I had to pick, I would probably pick streamers as my main method of trout fishing. And I would say to me, the most effective on a day in day out basis, although nymphing is close behind. So explain the difference between the two. Well, uh, nymphs, nymphs are the immature form of the aquatic insects, the nymphs or the larvae. And this is where they spend the bulk of their life. Uh, most of the year, uh, the nymphs are in and around the stream bottom. They might be moving around and eating and they become more active when, they, when it approaches the time for them to become the adults. Um, and it's the adult aquatic insects when they hatch. I'm sure you've heard that term before. When they hatch out of their nymphal or their larval stage to become the adult winged insects that we would see floating on the surface or flying around. And that's dry fly fishing. Okay, um, so nymphs uh, basically go below the surface. You're gonna be bouncing bottom with your nymph typically. Maybe you're making it swim a little bit. You're raising it from the bottom of the, of the water to maybe to the surface of the water as if it were swimming up to hatch into the adult. Whereas the dry fly, a dry fly is gonna do just that. It's gonna stay dry. It's gonna float on the water's surface imitating that adult aquatic insect as it's floating down. And if that's not working, you might twitch that bug. For example, caddis flies flitter around a lot on the water and you're almost always better to skate or skitter a caddis fly. Or for example, if a beetle, there's also terrestrial insects like ants, beetles, grasshoppers, crickets that are born on land but might fall into the water. They'll also be riding on the surface of the water and they're usually gonna be struggling a little bit. So the technique of twitching your fly, using your rod and your leader to help twitch that fly is another technique uh, that can work for you. So nymphs on the stream bottom or in the water column, dry flies float on the surface, they're imitating the adult forms. 
But with both, uh, with both techniques, you can either let them dead drift and float with the current as if it were not attached to your leader, or you can twitch them, swim them, skate them, and make them act alive. Uh, wh why would you choose one or the other? Um, here's, um, some of you may have heard this, me say this before. I think we did this in a fly episode a couple episodes back. Um, if fish are rising to the surface and eating bugs on the surface, throw a dry fly. If they're not, go below the surface with nymphs. If that's not working, remember that all fish eat other fish and you can never go wrong by fishing a streamer or a bait fish imitation. Um, what kind of technique works best? Well, that's going to depend on the day. And again, if they're rising, throw dry flies. If they're not, throw nymphs or streamers. So, uh, Aaron, stay tuned. We do have uh, a really cool series coming up. Um, uh, it should be soon on entomology. And that's going to help you out a whole lot on understanding the bugs, how they behave in the water, learn about their life cycles, and that's going to translate then into how do you make them act like food in the water. Because if it looks like food and acts like food, they'll probably eat it. So there you go, Aaron. Appreciate the question. Um, stay tuned. It's going to kind of tie into this next one as well, and we'll get you out that free hat and fly box. Uh, in fact, I think Rogue is back there packing it up right now as we speak. So... Next up, Nate Seidel from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Nate says, I am brand new to fly fishing and I have just recently picked up an Orvis Encounter 508 rod from you guys. And I had a question for on how to set up rigs for dries, nymphs, and streamers. And will a floating line be good for all or is it worth using a sinking tip fly line? Um, well, Nate, I tell you what, let's pull out the marker board and I'm going to give you a down and dirty rigging 101. Okay, Nate, remember, this is just a foundation and there's all different kinds of ways to rig. And when you talk to one guy, it might be one way and another guy another way. And this is not gospel. There's a million ways to do this. But I think what I'm about to show you will give you a nice foundation for dry flies, for nymphs, and for streamer fishing. So let's start off with dry flies, flies that float, usually imitating adult aquatic insects or terrestrial insects that may fall on the surface of the water. You're typically going to start off with a nine foot leader in there and about. Go back to episode nine of getting started in fly fishing and see that as a beginner, I recommend you stick with a leader approximately the same length as your fly rod. Your fly rod's probably going to be eight and a half or nine foot in length. Uh, you're going to go with a 9-foot leader, and it's usually going to be tapered down to about 4x, 5x, or 6x, but that's just a rough guideline. Remember, episode 9, it's all based on the size, weight, and wind resistance of the fly you're using. You're typically going to add some fly floating. You're going to need um, some help with keeping that fly afloat, and you're going to use something like Gink or Flyagra or one of the high and dry uh, products that we sell here at the shop. You're going to rub a little bit of that on there and you're going to throw that dry fly out upstream and let it float back down naturally or dead drift riding with the speed of the current. And if that doesn't work, then you're going to raise your rod tip or skate or skitter that dry fly across the surface. Of course, if it's an ant or a beetle or a cricket, it's going to struggle. So you might use your rod and wiggle that fly a little bit to get the fish's attention. Really couldn't be simpler. Dry fly fishing, again, just a guideline, add some fly floating. Throw it in the water and make it act like food. Okay, let's take a look at nymph fishing. Nymph fishing, I'm gonna start off with approximately a nine foot leader. I'm probably going to be more like 2x, 3x, and 4x on my tippet, but again, that's just a guideline. It's based on the size of the fly, but typically, nymph fishing, you're going to be a slightly thicker on the tippet because you're going to be, uh, the flies are heavier, and you're probably going to be adding split shot, and you're probably going to be adding a strike indicator to this system. So... The tippets are typically heavier, but that's not a law, okay? Um, split shot. 
you're going to use your hemostats to crimp the split shot maybe four to six inches from the fly up onto your leader. That's typically what I do. That's where I start. Um, I would, probably wouldn't go any closer with the split shot, but you may go further away from the fly with the split shot. Just realize it'll be a little tougher to cast and the fly might ride up a little bit higher. That's all. I think four to six inches from the fly with your split shot is a good place to start. And your strike indicator, again, you can put it wherever you want, but as a general rule, I go one and a half to two times the water depth. Okay, so if your water is four foot deep, um, you're gonna go six to eight foot up on the butt section of your leader with that strike indicator. Okay, although if you're actually using the indicator as a bobber or what we call right angle nymphing, you're obviously you're gonna set that strike indicator or bobber at the desired depth that you want the fly to ride. Okay, that is another technique, say that you're bluegill or crappie fishing or you've got very slow currents and you want to suspend a fly off the bottom, you can use your indicator as a bobber and you're going to set it at that desired depth. Okay. Um, and then as far as your technique there goes for both of you in this video, <laughs> look at this drawing. You're going to throw that nymph upstream, you're going to let it ride dead drift with the speed of the current as if it were unattached to your leader or tippet. And if that doesn't work, you're going to raise your rod tip and you're going to raise that nymph or larva pattern from the bottom as if it were swimming to the surface to become the adult. A lot of times action or movement is what really triggers a strike. Okay, So you see that even though volumes have been written on how nymph fishing is so mysterious and different than dry fly fishing, it's the same drawing. Dead drift, let it float down the, the, with the speed of the current or raise it up and give it some action. Really pretty simple. Okay, and now streamer fishing. Last, but certainly not least, because remember that all fish eat other fish. If you're ever wondering what fly to fish, tie on a streamer and take it for a swim. They'll probably eat it. I may go to a shorter leader for a streamer. A heavier fly is going to be easier to cast on a slightly shorter leader. So this is one case where you might go a little shorter than your rod, and it's not overly critical. So I might go to a seven and a half or maybe even a six foot leader when I'm throwing a streamer. And of course, just as a guideline, your tippet is typically going to be heavier because streamers are uh, bigger and typically heavier than most nymphs and dry flies. So you will need thicker tippet, usually somewhere in the zero one two. Although if you're a small mouth or a large mouth angler, you might be off the X chart and you might be up into 12 thousandths or even 13 thousandths on the tippet, which is bigger and thicker than zero X. I'm typically going to add split shot. Uh, split shot. You're typically going to add split shot, although the fly might be heavy enough. A lot of your streamers have cone heads or bead heads. That might be enough to get you deep enough in the water column, but if you're not catching fish, you might need to go deeper, and you're going to do that by adding split shot. And once again, I'm probably going to add that split shot by using my hemostats. I'm going to crimp the split shot onto the tip at approximately four to six inches up from the fly. It's not a law, but I think it's a good place to start. You asked about sinking lines, and we do use sinking lines a lot for fishing streamers. In fact, I'm probably 99%. If I'm fishing a streamer, I'm throwing a sinking line these days, as we all learned from our good friend Kelly Gallup, um, uh, who really changed the way we fish streamers and changed the way we look at sinking lines. If you are fishing a sinking tip fly line, which I think you will want to, Eventually, I typically you know, go no more than four to five foot on your leader. This is very, very, very important. Um, off of any sink tip, I never go more than four to five foot on my leader. And I usually do something like um, a butt section, uh, maybe a two foot butt section of 17 thousandths, a one foot butt, butt, or mid section, excuse me, a one foot mid section, and maybe a one foot tippet of say 12 or 11 thousandths, wherever you need to be based on the fly. So I'm typically four foot and I go two foot of butt section, which kind of matches up with the tip of the line, a transition piece as your midsection, and then a foot of tippet. That's all you need off of a sinking fly line. And that helps keep the entire system 
uh, down in the water column and it keeps the fly down when you're retrieving instead of more of a jigging motion that you would get out of a floating fly line system. All right, so there you go, Nate. It's not that complicated. Of course, there's plenty of other ways of doing this, but I think if you take this as a the foundation of what we just did there, um, I think it's a good start for you. And then you'll start learning new ways to rig and, and variations on those basic rigs. But I think what we just did right there is the basics and that'll get you pointed in the right direction. Um, and then as far as using the sinking tip, we love sinking tip fly lines for streamers. Can't say enough about them. And eventually you will probably wind up with a sinking tip fly line. Although most everything that you do can and will be done with a floating fly line. So there you go, Nate, I hope that helps. Thanks for being here. Thanks to all of you for being a part of this Q&A series. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to go to Mad River Outfitters and share some love with us because we would love to continue making these videos and that costs money. So stay tuned, we've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.